Now, a new study has suggested that magic mushrooms may be able to alleviate depression in almost a third of patients. So could we see them used more and more in medicine? Joining us today is psychedelic researcher Henry Whitfield, who has his own experiences with treating patients with magic mushrooms. Um, morning. Just first of all, morning. morning. Bring us up to date on what the rules are in terms of legality with all this. I mean, are you... Uh, we hear about microdosing in the States and we hear about other countries using mushrooms, perhaps, in some of this. Are we allowed to do that medicinally here yet? No, in most countries it's still completely illegal. There are certain universities that have done... had to work really hard, and in this country, for example, I think it's taking many years to just get a licence to mm. do the research. And, of course, for personal use or to run a retreat, it's still completely illegal in most countries. There are a few exceptions, like the Netherlands, Jamaica, some, some small... Um, some smaller countries. In the United States, uh, next year in... Oregon, finally there are going to be some uh, magic mushroom therapy centres that can open legally, but it's still very rare. How do you know what's a magic mushroom and what isn't? Um, well, yeah, there are, I think, I believe there are over a hundred different mushrooms that have this kind of psychedelic effect. Right. And there's a, there's a famous mushroom expert, um, Paul Stamets, and what he says is, if, it, if when you break the mushroom, it's blue, then it's quite it's very likely. I think he even says he hasn't found one that wasn't psychedelic when it had that blue colour right. to it. This is a whole fascinating area of the use of drugs and treating sort of mental health. And we've talked um, in the past about MDMA being used in the treatment of soldiers coming back from, uh, from war who are suffering with PTSD. I find it fascinating that, that this could be used to help treat people with depression. I mean, what would be the reality? Someone who's, you know, going through a tough time and, you know, seriously suffering with depression, are they going to be hallucinating, giggly, hysteria? I mean, what would be the lived experience of someone with depression being treated with, with magic mushrooms? Yeah, that's a really good question. It varies a lot. People can have an experience of just intense love and uh, connection. A person might also be able to... Part of, I think, how it helps therapeutically is that you can access difficult feelings. I think the reason why people... Uh, one reason we end up with psychological issues to begin with is because we're not willing to feel certain feelings. We block our feelings that we don't want to feel. So a person might feel a grief that they never allowed themselves to feel before, say, they lost somebody, or, or if they were traumatised, the fear that they felt dur during a traumatic incident, they might be able to feel that more. So it can be either end of the scale. So, I mean, that sounds dangerous in itself, doesn't it? I mean, I can understand the, the, the advantage of accessing traumatic um, emotions to try and rid yourself of them, but the idea that somebody would be, be perhaps doing that on their own, or, I mean, do you have to be supported through, through this treatment? Yeah, very much so, yeah. Um, all psychedelic researchers, psych people who run psychedelic retreat centres, they would all agree that you should, it's not really... We would not recommend doing it on your own, because especially if you're vulnerable anyway, then it's going to bring up what's there for you. Mm. What about you personally? Are you an advocate? Do you ever take them yourself? Yes, I have. Right. What type? Anyone's that oh, people have heard? I mean, is, what's the medicine? Is it called Wanaka, the South American drug, where people sort of witness their own births whilst they're taking it? Is that a magic mushroom, or is? Um, <laughs> just coming up with names now. I mean, Wachuma, maybe. Yeah, maybe. Is that a mushroom? Um, no, that's a cactus. Oh right. Okay. Right. But what about which? What did you take? Um, yeah, I've taken mushrooms. In the Netherlands, uh, you can buy tr uh, mushroom truffles. So the truffle is the part of the mushroom that grows underground. Right. And you can buy them in a, a high street shop, a smart shop. And this is your retreat we're looking at pictures of. So people actually are taking them collectively. This is an experience where people take them together. Yeah, so a lot of people um, in the psychedelic research world I kind of believe that in the future, as this becomes more accessible, it's likely that it'll be done in groups because it's more cost-effective that way. Because right. in, the, in the, the, the big studies, like the one that just happened, that was just published very recently, um, they have two therapists for each individual, which, of course, is, could be prohibitively costly. In, right. Um, but in a, in, when you do it in a, a group setting like that, you have the group... Uh, effect. We learn from each other. People can inspire each other. If a person is able to feel a grief or something that's difficult, then if, if your neighbour is doing that, that can make you feel, oh, maybe it's safe for me to do that as well. So that can be... A... And it, can I ask you, is it expensive to do that? Um, the group therapy? It's, uh, it's, I mean, it's still relatively expensive, yeah. Um, 
mean, some retreat centers, I mean, what, some retreat centers, they charge, I think, up for a four or five day retreat, they might charge something like uh, four or 5,000 euros, I believe. Ooh. Okay. Which is pretty expensive. And, and just quickly, because we are out of time, if people feel benefits to their depression, is it in that moment only or are there lasting benefits? Yeah, this is the thing that interests me the most, actually. How, as a researcher, how do you make the effects last long term? Mm. Because um, we know that sometimes people can rel a lot of people can relapse after about six months. But from a psychiatric point of view, it's already a massive breakthrough. If from just yeah, the recent study that was published, just one dose already 12 weeks, people still, a lot of people still had lost their depression symptoms. Mm, interesting. Fascinating. Well, I think it's a long time before it, it will even be considered yeah, acceptable yeah, yeah. here in the UK, but really interesting to hear these arguments. Henry Whitfield, psychedelic researcher, thank you very much indeed. Thank you. Nice to meet you. Oh, stay with us. After the break, we're speaking to the Shadow Chief Secretary to the Treasury, what he makes of uh, what we expect to be in the